Nearly half a million people come into accident and emergency every year with a sporting injury. Here's another one. Eight-year-old Mason is in accident and emergency with his mum, big sis and dad. He's not too happy, though. Because he's got a dishcloth on his leg. No, Zand, because... I hurt my ankle. Let's see it, then. My ankle's like a ball. And Mason can't bear to look. How did it happen? Check it out. Mason was trampolining and jumping as high as he could. Higher, and higher, and higher. Is that out of space? It gets worse. His cousin was on the same trampoline, going as high as he could. So guess what happened next? They left Earth orbit and flew to Mars. Outer space looks a lot of fun. Oh, hang on a minute. This doesn't look good. You're right, Zand. Here's what really happened. They smashed into each other, toppled down, and Mason twisted his ankle. Ouch. Oh. It's just a typical boy, isn't it? Good as gold. I'd be amazed if it's not broke. Here's the very man to tell you, Dr Christopher Beavis. Take a peek, Mason. You're in safe hands. Dr Beavis checks the sensations in Mason's foot, as sometimes with a bad break or bad sprain, swelling can compress the blood supply and nerves, but he's happy that they're all OK. We're going to get an X-ray just to make sure there isn't any bony damage underneath. Um, personally, I think this is a sprain at the moment, but obviously the X-ray will tell us a bit more information. So I'll get that sorted. We'll know what we're dealing with. So it's X-ray time for Mason. Although the doc thinks it's a sprain, you never can tell. That's a pretty good picture, Mason. Well done. Dr Beavis is checking the bones in Mason's foot. There's just a small fragment of bone, if you like. It isn't conclusive, but because of the symptoms on the side of his ankle, we're going to treat it like it's a clinical fracture. So the doc is treating it like a break. I hope you like the crutches, Mason. I'm kind of hoping I get crutches, so I'll be popular at school. What's he like? So we'll get you back to a fracture clinic in the next day or so. Never mind that. Yeah, what about the crutches? Does he keep his weight off it? Yeah, keep his weight. We'll give him some crutches as well. We'll see how he gets on with that. Result. But wait. There's no guarantee you get to take the crutches, because if you can't handle the crutches... Oh, we can. You can handle yeah. the crutches, OK. <laughs> I've been practising okay. okay, for when good. this day comes. Excuse me, practising? That's keen. But at eight, Mason's a bit young for crutches, and even though he could do with them, first he has to prove he can use them. Not what I wanted, crutches. Not yet, you haven't. We don't really see him again once we give them to the kids, unfortunately. But, uh, but yeah, they seem to find them exciting. I'll be the second one in my school to have crutches. First one in my class. And what's so good about that? Girls. You'll have girls? I'll have all the girls just going, oh, you're all right, you're all right, you're all right. And I'll be like, yeah. Playing it cool, Mason. Nice. nice. But first, Mason has to take his test. They're not taking my crutches away. Join us later to see if he passes the test. Another patient has had a rather unusual accident. Luckily, the team is ready to fix her. In accident and emergency, seven-year-old Amy has come in with... A flower growing out of her head? No, a sore foot and some very nice boots. Yes, but what's wrong with her foot? I'm going to go and get my toe checked to see if it's broken because, because my brother... Go on. He pushed me and I got my foot stuck in a chair. Foot stuck in a what? A chair. How on earth? It all happened five days ago. Amy was at home in the lounge with her little brother. He had his favourite show on the telly and he wasn't changing the channel for anyone. Well, you know what it's like when your fave show is on. To keep the peace, Amy decided it wasn't worth an argument, so she thought she'd go upstairs and play. As she got up, she went to pick up her doll. Go on then, Amy, off you go. But her brother thought she was going to grab the remote control off him and pushed her away. Amy went tumbling backwards, but her foot was trapped under the chair. Well, that'll teach you for playing nicely, Amy. Ouch! It really hurt that moment and stuff. And I thought it would get better, but it didn't. She might have got to grips with using crutches, but her foot still hurts and she can't put any weight on it. Which is a problem, because Amy has some big plans on the horizon. 
Well, I hope it's better in two weeks because it's my birthday and for my birthday I'm doing ice skating and I need my toes to ice skate. Yep, you certainly do. So best to get you in to see Dr Adam Abraham. Come through, please. I like your boots. Told you they were nice. Yeah, yeah but what about the toe? Where is it the most painful, my love? The painful there. OK, and does it hurt if I push in slightly? Only a little bit. OK, I think we need an X-ray, just to make sure it's not broken. So, time for Amy to hot-foot it to X-ray. OK, nice and still for me. If your feet were x-rayed right now, it would look like you had twice the number of bones as your mum or dad's feet. That's because when you're born, your feet contain soft cartilage. As they grow, the cartilage develops into pieces of bone, but it's not until you're about 18 that they fuse together to make the 26 bones of an adult foot. But has Amy broken any of her foot bones? Time to find out. That's your toe. Now, I can't see a break. There could be a number of reasons for that. One being that there wasn't a break to begin with, that she's either done some damage to the tendons or she's just sprained it very badly. Two is because it has been almost a week now. If the break was bad, we would have seen it, regardless of the five, six day interval. So it's good news, and all the doctor needs to do is strap up her toe to make sure it heals in the best position. But does it mean that Amy will make it to the ice rink? In two weeks. In two weeks. Yeah, you've got plenty of time because that's almost three weeks from the original injury, isn't it? I think it should be fine. That's a relief. Time to hop it, Amy. Your ice rink awaits. Bye. Bye. <laughs> time to head back down to accident and emergency. Here's another curious case. In Manchester, 11-year-old Oscar has been brought to hospital by his mum when he came home from football with a sore nose. Playing football yesterday at the football training, we, we were winning 1-0. Uh, Go on. And someone el elbowed me by accident and then it felt like it just went on, on the side. Well, I definitely stopped prodding it then. So, how exactly did this nose-bending accident happen? It was football training at school, and Oscar was in goal. His team were one up. They look a bit out of breath. And the crowd was going wild. But the opposition were putting the pressure on, and the ball was heading Oscar's way. Oh, where's the defence? He's clean through. Oscar ran out to kick the ball clear. When all of a sudden there was a smash, as his nose collided with his opponent's elbow. Yellow, I'd have gone for red, but I guess ref knows best. That was terrible, Zahn. Oscar's nose might not look that bent, but with an accident like this, there's a good chance it could be broken. It feels weird. I bet it does. So let's get that weird feeling nose seen to. Over to ear, nose and throat specialist, Mr Baskaran Ranganathan. He'll find out if anything's damaged. Is it so down here? No. OK. The nasal bone, probably it's just broken at one point, so that has shifted that bone to one side. With a break like this, that means only one thing, an operation. Inside your nose, the tip is made of flexible cartilage, but higher up, there are two thin bones which make up your nasal bone. When these get a bang, they can break easily and need surgery to push them back into place. Oscar's had a general anaesthetic, so he can't feel a thing. And now it's down to Mr Baskaran to straighten his sniffer. The doctor uses forceps to pull the bones back into line. This might look nasty, but if the bones aren't straightened up, Oscar could have breathing problems for life. There's a few final adjustments, and before he knows it, his nose is normal again. Strapped up with support strips across the bridge of his nose, it's all over. And an hour later, he's woken up. You look straight now, you know. <laughs> straight. Well, Mum's happy, but what do you think? It's straight now and I can play football. Well, hold your horses. Your nose needs six to eight weeks to heal before you can get back in goal. But for now, at least you're off home. Bye! Bye. 
Our next patient was expecting a normal day, but she's ended up in accident and emergency. Let's see her get fixed. In Sheffield Accident and Emergency, eight-year-old Evie has arrived with her mum and a rather nasty-looking cut to her chin. Ooh, catch that drip. It stings a lot. <laughs> I bet it does. What on earth happened? She's in her wellies. Is that a clue? Let's find out. Evie lives on a farm. On a farm? What animals does she have? She's got a pet donkey, two sheep, five horses, three cats and two dogs. Awesome! So what happened to her chin? Keep quiet and I'll tell you. It was snowing. Whoa, indeed it was. Evie decided to go sledging. She was bombing down a hill. She's going very fast. Yes, and then a huge gust of wind blew her sledge away. Oh, no! She landed face first and her chin scraped along the snow and gravel beneath until she stopped. Ouch! The snow wasn't as thick as I thought it was. Never mind. Here's Dr Suzanne Barron to take a look at that chin. Quite a gash, this, actually. I'll say. Say what? That it's quite a gash. Duh. She's got a medium-sized cut under her chin, which will definitely need some cleaning and uh, bringing the edges back together again. So, first the mission is to give Evie's wound a good clean and get all the gravel out that they can see. The skin on our chin has five layers for a piece of grit to get lost in. A combination of skin, fat, fibrous tissue and blood cells surrounds our skull. When these layers are broken, dangerous infection can occur. So it's important that we get that bit of grit out of Evie's chin and close up the hole. There's one stubborn bit of grit that just won't budge. Step up Nurse Susan Moosen, grit extractor extraordinaire. If you're squeamish, look away now, because to get a grip on that gravel, she's using a needle. I used just the very end of the needle just to keep flicking it out. Eventually, I got to the, the end of it and got it all out. Yeah. Well done, Susan. With the grit gone, steri strips and glue hold the cut together until it heals. That's all done. Does that feel all right? Well done. That was very brave. And will brave Evie keep on sledging? I've probably gone the deepest now in the deeper field. <laughs> now. <laughs> Good plan, Evie. You've got true grit. Very funny, Chris. Bye! In accident and emergency, the team are ready to fix our next patient. Let's meet him. In Sheffield, seven-year-old Bailey is in accident and emergency with his mum and granddad. But what's going on with that swollen finger? I play football, and our goalkeeper and my granddad keep pulling my finger bent back. Granddad did what? I can't even remember doing it. OK, Granddad's in denial. Let's find out exactly what happened. Granddad and Bailey were playing football in the garden. Nice pants. Zond. The big man played a good attack, but Bailey played a good defence, and after a game of two halves, it was a draw. Oh, dear. Penalty time. Wow. Wild West style? Well, I thought it would add a bit more tension. Grandad stepped into town, ready to fire the winning goal, but Bailey was ready to stop the ball from going past. This town was only big enough for one of them. Nice voice, Chris. Thanks, Sand. Grandad took the penalty. He kicked the ball. Bailey jumped. He saved, but the ball bent his finger back. Ouch! And Grandad... <laughs> yes, what? Grandad did a runner. Let's see if we can get to the bottom of this. Ready to examine the damaged digit is Dr Bimal Kalzi. And what's been going on? I play football with my granddad and he kicked ball and my finger bent back. What happened after that? You don't want to know. Granddad did a runner. Granddad did a runner. <laughs> OK, sweetie, we're going to do a couple of funny exercises. Can you squeeze my fingers for me nice and tight? Don't let me go. Good to... grip. I think it's very unlikely that he's broken it. Grandad's relieved. We'll do an X-ray just to check because there is swelling there. He may at the most have had a little chip. So it's off to X-ray where the medics will find out if there's any actual bone damage to Bailey's hand. Are things looking up for Bailey? OK, that's it, we're finished. So the doc now checks out the results. 
I wonder what Bailey and Grandad are up to. Surely they're not. Are you playing football again? This is how they had them the last time. So busted. Bailey, that's your x-ray of your fingers, and I can see a very tiny chip. Grandad can't believe it. It's quite a simple break. We'll strap his fingers up to the next finger for support. He can wiggle his fingers gently and it'll heal very nicely on its own. Is that quite cool to look at? <laughs> yeah. So it's not too bad, just a small chip. And Bailey gets some strapping on the finger to give it support and help it heal. And what have the footballing fanatics learned from this? I think next time I'm going to win goal and he can kick the ball at me. <laughs> Time for one final game before they go. Uh, isn't Grandad meant to be in goal? Bye-bye. <laughs> Mind your finger. Ouch. Meet the Bod Pod. No, I'm not being sent into space. With the help of Dr Philip McTurnan, this cool bit of kit is going to measure how much fat I have on my body. OK, so what do I do? Just get in it? No. There's one thing that you need to do first. You need to make sure that we have something that uh, is much tighter than this. Well, luckily, I'm wearing my Operation Ouch leotard. You might be wondering why I've agreed to wear this, but the pod needs to take very precise measurements, so baggy clothing and loose hair are no good. This device works by measuring the amount of room my body takes up in this enclosed space. It feels very claustrophobic. Luckily, I've got a nice big window so I can see. And a few fancy computer calculations later, we have my stats. There we go. Percentage fat, 13.8%. That's very good. It means, you know, you're fit, healthy, and you've got the right, right amount of fat, that's for sure. So if I'm 13.8% body fat, how much fat is there on me? And to give you an idea, this is standard cooking oil. Mm -hmm. But if you had 12 bottles of this, this would equate to how much fat you have in your body. This is a really nice illustration of how amazing fat is as an energy store. I have 12 bottles of fat like this in my body, and that's enough energy for me to run 30 marathons. And it also explains why fat is so hard to get rid of, because you've got to do a huge amount of work to get rid of a relatively small amount of fat. So more exercise will get rid of it, but to understand why too much fat can be bad, we need to get a closer look. I'm about to have a fat biopsy, and that's when some fat is taken out of my tummy using a huge needle. Now, obviously, Zander and I aren't afraid of big needles, but if you're squeamish, you need to turn off the television, leave the room, and go and hide under your bed. Done that? Good. Dr Milan, show us the needle. I told you it was big. Zand. Where's Zahn? Zahn said he'd do this. Too late. I've had a local anaesthetic, so I can't feel anything. And the doctor's cut a little hole in my tummy so that he can get that huge needle in and some of my fat out. Oh, wow, yeah. So this yellow stuff floating on the top here, this is the fat from my tummy. And the average person has 50 billion fat cells, more fat cells than there are people on the planet. Now, it may look like we've used a huge needle and not got very much fat, but we don't need that much because we're going to have a look at some fat up close under the microscope. So let's see what the cells actually look like. These are my fat cells, and these belong to a person who has a higher fat content in their body. Why are their cells looking different to mine? We can see from here you have a lot smaller fat cells. Now, someone who has more weight, they have bigger fat cells. So a person with more fat doesn't necessarily have more cells, they've just got more fat in each cell. Yes, so eventually the fat spills over and then what happens is you can get fat in your liver, you can get it in your heart, which affects how they function and how your body functions as a whole. So although body fat is vital to life because it's where the energy from the food we eat is stored, it's really important we have the right amount of it. Too much of it can put you at risk of conditions like heart disease and cancer. So I, for one, am going to keep up with my exercise. I must get Zand one of these leotards. No chance. 